Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking It's Steve. I was here after this vid by Triple OC. It's titled, Female Rap Has a Colorism Problem. Oop. Okay, let's hear what she has to say. Let's watch. Over the past couple of months, I've explored a few reasons why female rap artists thrive compared to others. Music aside, of course, and I'm sure we all can agree that we see a few patterns from pretty privilege helping many to rise to others tapping into the over-sexualized nature that they know will catch eyes. There's one issue that is undeniable though, colorism, and likely it's light skin privilege, or is it? Let's talk about it. But first, welcome to the channel. Hey, hi, what's that, what did I see? And I do rap and pop culture commentary. So if you're into that, subscribe and hit the like button. The history of colorism in female rap music has evolved alongside the genre, reflecting societal attitudes towards race, beauty, and power in the 1980s and 1990s. As artists like MC Light and Queen Latifah emerged, the industry still adhered to Eurocentric beauty standards, often sidelining darker-skinned women. In the 2000s, we saw the rise of rap stars like Lil' Kim and Boxy Brown, and despite them seeing success, their careers highlighted the industry's preference for lighter skin particularly in music videos that perpetuated these ideals. And if you ask me, specifically during this time period, it felt like if you were darker skinned, there's a good chance that your rapping capabilities had to be absolutely off the charts, or you had to throw in some sort of sexual element, show a little more skin in order to be taken seriously. When it comes to an artist like Foxy Brown, her relationship to colorism in the industry and beyond feels a bit unique to me because her talent was always more than enough. And on the outside looking in as a listener, it always seemed like she was pretty confident, not only with being a woman in the rap industry, but as a dark skinned black woman, just overall. She always seemed to fit into that category of black women who were comfortable in their skin, like Lauren Hill, Missy Elliott, and other women MCs during this era. But the more that I look what back at old photographs and magazine features, dive into interviews and quotes on fan pages like Foxy's archive while making this video, I see just how much the industry and colorism did some damage to her self image. In the past, she has spoken on how executives will make you feel even more insecure if you're not strong enough. Ooh. Oh, she said the label would hint to me that if I lighten my skin, I would sell even more records. That's fucked. Like it is, will make you feel so even good. more insecure if you're not strong enough. As her label would hint to her that if she just lightened her skin, she would sell more records. Recounting that Def Jam told her that she had everything going on for her. Pretty face, the body, skills, even the audience. But if she made the choice to just lighten up her skin a little bit, she could go so far. Aww. While some artists were encouraged to show more skin, the industry wanted Foxy to show even less and consider bleaching. That puts into perspective what happened to Lil' Kim. So they pushed her to do that, and lo and behold, she did it. And she kept doing it. She would do and photo shoots and see the pictures, noticing that she was so much lighter and, you know, they didn't always give artists consent or ask for their approval of these pictures. They gave her so you would look in the magazine and, and you would be out here looking yeah. crazy. Yeah. And now that and I look at some of these really. photos, it's so apparent that her face is so much lighter than the rest of her body. And don't get me wrong, makeup artists have struggled to find the correct shades for different skin tones of black women back then. And hey, even sometimes now, I know y'all remember that ashy makeup back in the day. Ooh. But come on, yeah, at this point, Foxy had enough of the label trying to completely change her, saying that she knew other black women in the industry who went through the same thing, maybe even those who weren't oh even God. as dark skinned as her. And over time, it feels like this has manifested into her viewing herself just a little bit differently too. Like being offended that people mentioned Cleo Trappa was serving Foxy in one of her past music videos with Foxy popping off saying that her real twin was Malibu Mitch, someone who has paid homage to her in the past. Now look, 
a lot of people were saying, listen, this incident is not about colorism. Foxy is just straight up feisty, okay? And she has an affinity for certain upcoming women artists, Malibu Mitch, Lola Brooke, and she prefers to shout out these women. But the fact that she was so adamant about not being compared to another dark-skinned young woman is her. what got me. But what do you think? What they're gonna do with her being dark-skinned? This situation, even though this was years ago, really made me think of the whole Ice Spice and Cleo Trapper thing. A whole nother tale of colorism, if you ask me. And Lola we can dark certainly go too, down so a rabbit hole like when it comes to artists like Lil Kim that. as it relates to colorism and beauty and how her romantic partners and the industry as a whole were instrumental in making her feel less pretty and push her towards needing surgeries that have completely altered the Kim that we knew from way back then. But that's a story for another time. What we can say is that there's a good chance that the original Lil Kim would still be here if it weren't for intimate partner abuse, both mental and physical. And it often feels so out of touch when people push the narrative that Kim has done all of this skin lightening, be yelling, and touched her face in order to feel white woman adjacent without acknowledging the why. I mean, she's even stated in interviews mm -hmm. how having low self-esteem paired with past boyfriends, cheating on her with women who looked European, made her feel even less pretty. And don't get me started on the Notorious B.I.G. From his abuse to love triangle with Faith Evans, yet another woman who benefited from colorism despite actually having talent. Listen, more people should have been looking out for Kimberly Jones and having her best interest at heart. That's it, that's all. However, the 2010s marked a shift with artists like Nicki Minaj and Iggy Azalea sparking discussions about race and representation. Now, Iggy is a whole nother story because she aligns under this umbrella of cultural appropriation more and she isn't black. But we ain't gonna act like she did not benefit from acting ratchet, being curvy a la BBL, and cosplaying as a more light-skinned female rapper, but she was really out here a white woman from Australia. T.I. will pay for his crimes. But when it comes to an artist like Nicki, many people view her as this blueprint for many female rap artists, colorism included. In a 2020 interview with her former manager, Big Fendi, he said that Nicki made it hard for brown-skinned chicks in the rap game. Essentially, she set the bar as a lot of rap chicks started thinking that because, you know, Nicki is popping right now, they had to at least try to catch up to her to look like her. And even Nicki acknowledged that while dark-skinned women have to work way harder in every field, and while she didn't feel like her complexion is the reason why she made it, she doesn't try to be blind or play dumb to what's actually happening in the world and in the industry. And that's when we get to someone who fans feel like does play dumb when it comes to colorism in rap music. Now, there are a couple of artists that I have frequently discussed on the channel that get equal amounts of love and hate. And I'd like to think it's because their prettiness outshines the quality of their music. One of them is Ice Spice, who I'm not gonna lie, it seems like she is laying low these days since the release of her debut album and all of that bad press. Popping out in her dark haired era, and she's, low, she's keeping it cute. But the other artist is Sweetie, who I feel like, believe it or not, is an artist that needs to be working as twice as hard as the majority of these other girls in the rap game. And I'm not gonna lie, it seems like she's finally realizing that. Don't worry, I'll explain. A couple of days ago, I saw a tweet from Sweetie where she was clapping back at someone who said, I bet Sweetie wakes up every morning, brushes her teeth, looks in the mirror, and thanks God for colorism. That's wild now, size. I know this says deleted tweet was likely said in poor taste and humor, but hidden inside of every joke is just a little bit of truth or a lot. Sweetie clapback saying, yikes, tasteless humor, nothing was witty or clever about this whatsoever. Joking about a serious psychological battle is never funny. And that's when the comments had a field day. Either they were defending Sweetie, saying that people are just mad because she's attractive and paid, or pointing out that Sweetie is a bit out of touch. She knows that she benefits from colorism in the industry, but chooses to fly under the radar a little bit. At the end of the day, two she things can be true. Sweetie clearly receives attention and has been able to sustain her career for this long, like many other Equally. fair skinned women. If not because more, she's... because let's stop acting like there's not. I feel like people focus on colorism a lot, and it's very much a, a big issue, but there are many light skinned women who are not 
nearly as attractive. Like Ice Spice, for example, and I, I but people, I mean, I think Ice Spice benefited from colorism way more than Sweetie did because people bigged Ice Spice up. I feel like because of that, they liked her a lot. They felt like she was appealing, but I've never felt like Ice Spice was cute. I mean, she's a cute-ish girl, but people, when they were calling her fine, I'm just like, where? Like, I've always felt like her face looks a little off. Like she, you know, I'm not going to come for her because it's not nice to come for people's looks but we talk about you know the goddamn topic and we're gonna compare to somebody like ice spice to sweetie i would say that sweetie definitely benefits way more from pretty privilege she's just a pretty girl like whatever skin tone she she would have been but i'm sure colorism helps you know propel her even more but that's what she's benefiting from icy spicy <laughs> She benefited a lot more from colorism specifically. To manage to stay relevant. But, anyway. but colorism and pretty privilege has played a role in this too. Because I feel like for okay, the past couple of years, we've been it. thinking, all right, when is Sweetie's next hit? What will she do to blow us away musically? And we Nothing. Because she's not a good rapper. Because she has benefited from colorism and pretty privilege heavily. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, it's not just female rap that has this problem. The whole world <laughs> has this problem across different races, cultures, you know, in different countries. It's just the problem everywhere. Everywhere has been colonized for the most part. Not everywhere, but um, yeah, that's the issue in the world, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, sweetie, I've dragged this woman enough. I will leave her alone. <laughs> I, I got enough to say. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.